Well, right now, medical providers, big and small, are facing a major cash crunch in the aftermath of a massive cyber attack. The attack has paralyzed Change Healthcare. That is the largest healthcare billing and payment system in the country. And what it means is that thousands of providers don't get paid by insurance. To give you a sense of the impact, Change Healthcare normally handles $14 billion in transactions every year. So from Oregon, clinics say they're running out of cash. Ohio, patients say they're stuck in limbo. In Minnesota, medical providers say it is a mess. And in Oklahoma, Maine and beyond, reports that this attack is pushing some clinics to financial peril. Joining me now, someone who knows all about the aftermath of this cyber attack. Uh, that is Kathy Ubra. She is the CEO of Pontchartrain Cancer Center in Louisiana. Kathy, thanks so much for joining us. Walk us through what happened with this cyber attack and how it first impacted your center. Yes. Um, hi, Chris. Thank you for having me today. We went home one evening, ready to go to work the next day, and lo and behold, you know, Change Healthcare was hit by that black cat cyber attack. So, you know, what does that mean for a, for a medical practice? It means that, you know, our abilities to get authorizations for a patient's medical care, verify their eligibility of their insurance plan, all of that stopped without warning. So we were able to contact most of the payers by phone and, and work through those things. But what it did do in overnight was it completely stopped our ability to send out healthcare claims to our payers and then to in turn have those processed and those payments come back to us. So those effects were felt pretty rapidly and we were scrambling to find out our workarounds in order to care for our patients and keep our clinics open. Yeah, if you don't have cash flow, what do you do? Well, that's a very good question. So, you know, most of us do have lines of credit and cash on hand. But what we've done in the oncology care setting, which is where I work, is we're using those funds for our general operating expenses, such as payroll, mortgages, and things like that. You know, the average medical oncologist spends about $10 million a year in drug purchasing in order to care for our patients. And so, you know, while we have those lines of credit and such, you know, they're just never going to be enough in order to, you know, continue to pay for our drugs. So quite honestly, with we rely on those, you know, pay it, payments from our insurers on a rolling weekly basis to help continually fund the drug purchasing that we do every three to five business days. So what are we doing right now? Well, without the support of our group purchasing organization, Syncora, as well as a lot of our pharma partners, um, you know, we are working with them and they're working with practices across the country in order to maintain access to drugs. And as of, you know, this morning, you know, Sencora has not had to turn away any medical practice from being able to purchase drugs. So we're still having, you know, we're st still able to maintain access. But what is that going to look like on the back end? Lines of credit are, are going up. You know, this is just, we don't see an end in sight, but we are very, you know, glad that our, you know, Syncora as well as our, our pharma partners are stepping up to the plate and helping us maintain access for patient care. Kathy Oob, I can't even imagine, but um, we wish you luck. And it is a reminder to all of us how dependent we are on these systems. Thank you so much for being with us. Much appreciated.